I, I have been waiting for you to join us tonight. We're really excited about tonight. So welcome tonight. Welcome to Rama Melbourne Online Church. And this is our Eagles Prayer Force meeting tonight. So I'm thrilled that you've joined us tonight. So I want to say a special thank you to each one of you for joining us for prayer so that we can travel nations, we can travel together as we pray following the leading of the Holy Spirit. So welcome tonight. But I want to say a very special welcome to someone really special tonight. I want to say welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. You live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, and from our we hearts. Are in to yield our mind, our focus to yours. And that tonight that we pick up with wherever that you're wanting to lead us in prayer. And we yield ourselves to you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, we honor you, and we thank you that you're with us in the midst today, tonight filling us afresh. Or oh, for those of you right now out there that you have not been filled afresh, I want you just to hold out your hands, say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for filling me afresh tonight. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this meeting tonight. 
and we yield our thoughts to your thoughts. We yield all our plans to your plan. And we give you, Father, all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's so beautiful, that song. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. You know, it's wonderful when the believers get together, when they come together and they pray. You know, the Bible says that one puts a thousand to flight, two put ten thousand to flight. Didn't the Bible say, where two are gathered in my name, there he is in the midst of us. And we've come in the name of Jesus. We've come in faith. And we've come in the name of Jesus. And we're expecting tonight to be fueled on the word of God, to be lifted up with his word, filled up with his word. And we're believing tonight that as we link arms together, link together in the spirit, and we begin to pray that something is going to change in the direction that the Lord sends us in to pray tonight in Jesus' name. And that's why it's important, church, that when we come together, we say, not two wills in this prayer time. No, 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 not two wills. We yield ours to the Holy Spirit so that you can have your way tonight in Jesus' name. So thank you for being here. You know, you can travel places in the spirit that you might never travel physically. You can go to places. You know, in fact, I've been into two nations this morning in my prayer, and I didn't leave my kitchen physically. And it's a wonderful thing that you can do that, that your prayers as the spirits lead in you can have an influence in another nation touching people's lives, touching a nation. So glory be to God. Let's be expecting tonight that we're here on purpose. You know, 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, and that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, the Eagles prayer meeting isn't just something that we threw together. No, we're here on purpose to fulfill the purposes of God through our prayer and that he has full reign when we begin to pray and we follow him. It's not the Holy Spirit engaging with us, it's us engaging with him and allowing him to take us where he wants that prayer taken and led where he wants to lead us because he knows, he knows the Father's will. And he comes to reveal that to us. And you know, I didn't do it last week, but I love to, to give you quotes on prayer because they stir me up. So I like to do that with you. But I'm just reminded of something before we see these quotes on prayer. Don't forget, Sunday the 28th of June. We are back. What about that? We get to be back fellowshipping with one another. I can hardly wait. I'm so excited. I love church. I love being at church. I love being with the family of God. And we have a new location for the AM service at Doncaster. That is at the Beaumont International Hotel. That's Doncaster Road East Doncaster. We're going to be looking for you on that Sunday and we are so excited about that service. So join us. Get ready. Join us. Glory be to God. Well, let me share my quotes with you. Charles Spurgeon said this, my soul's conviction is that prayer is the grandest power in the entire universe, the greatest power. And remember, Billy Graham said, a man on his knees in prayer has more power than the most powerful machine in the earth. And we need to be men and women on our knees in prayer following the plans and the purposes of God to pray into our nation and to pray for nations, different nations in the world. You know, 
E.M. Bounds said this, the Holy Spirit does not flow through methods, but through people. He does not come on machinery, he comes on people. He does not anoint plans, he anoints people who perform and fulfill those plans. Martin Luther says, prayer is the oxygen of the spiritual life and without it, we die. We need to pray. You know, I shared it with you a few weeks ago. Someone said, you know, when you go for a walk or you go to the gym, you get those little happy hormones released in you. And, um, and my husband said, you know, because we went for our big walk today, and he said, so you got those little happy hormones going off in you? I said, they went off when I got out of bed and I prayed. They're released in me when I begin to pray. I love praying. I'm excited about meeting the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit every morning. And they take me to places that I may not never go to, but they take me to places in the Spirit where I can pray for people and know that as I'm following the Holy Spirit in prayer, that my prayers are having an effect or it's giving God that avenue to work through and have an effect in nations and in people's lives. You know, prayer, Pastor Hagen says, prayer is the engine room of a church. But you know, prayer is the engine room of a family, of a marriage, the, the engine room of a church fulfilling the plans and the purposes of God. And praying helps us to tune in to the power of God and be aware of where he is directing our attention that day. Abraham Lincoln, you know I've already shared this with you, but I'm going to share it again. And I'm going to tell you why, because I love it. And you know something? We don't need a lot of new words. We need now words. And it's important, you know, that we spend that time as ministers. We spend that time as leaders seeking, not always trying to look for something new for the people, but looking for something that's now for the people that it's God's heartbeat now, it's God's word now, it's God's anointing now to help the people. Amen. Glory be to God. So Abraham Lincoln said this. He said, my mother's prayers clung to me all the days of my life. And, and the more that I go on the meaning of that word clung, as he puts it, means to hold on tightly. Just think when you're praying for your children, those prayers are holding on tightly to their lives. You might not always see straight away the evidence of it, but the fact is that they are holding on to them. And they've held some of them back from some of the things they may have got caught in. That word hung means to grip and to stick to them. It means to clasp tightly to their lives. Just think when you get up and you begin to pray for your children, you know, I pray uh, for a certain period of time every morning, just in the spirit, before I start speaking the word over my family, I pray in the spirit, releasing that supply. Philippians 1.19, Paul says, pray for me that a supply of the Spirit will come and avail me and turn this for my advantage. So when I get up of a morning and I pray for my family and I call every one of them out by name and I begin to pray in the Spirit over them, I believe, I use my faith and I believe in the name of Jesus that a supply of the Spirit's going and it turns them too in their lives from things where they may have stepped into wrong paths, but it turns them away from it in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. So you know, a praying mother and father, they tap in to the heart of the father where their children, where their grandchildren, where their great-grandchildren, where their great-great-grandchildren are concerned. You know, I pray through three levels, three or four levels 
of our generations to, for that word to hold on tight to every generation, that in every generation that follows my husband and I, they will carry faith in their own generation. Glory be to God. You know, Psalm 109 says, give yourself to prayer. You know, church, no one can give you to prayer. Only you can do that. And it's the same as as much as we hunger, as we pray for someone to get born again, we can't give them to salvation. That's something that they have to do. But you know, our praying for them begins to help it soften the heart, working around them, allow God to do things in their hearts that can bring them to that place of his saving grace, touching their hearts and changing their lives. Glory be to God. And so one minister said this, and this is something that I'm very mindful of, and I'm mindful of it as a parent, as an under shepherd in our churches. I'm very mindful of it as a, as in my life. One minister said this, before you stand before people, you need to have stood in the presence of God. And the more that I read that to myself, the more I look at that, I got this from it. So this is from Eileen Brown. Our confidence, where does our confidence to stand, come from. It comes from standing in the presence of God because in the presence of God, we get clothed by the Spirit of God for that day that lays ahead of us and in whatever area that we're led into in our lives. Well, we're going to start looking at a little bit of scripture. I trust you're ready because I'm ready. You know, Wigglesworth said this, you live ready. Because if you have to get ready, you may miss your opportunity. And that came about where he went to a young girl in a church, and I think she, she played the piano. And he said something to her about, you be ready for the service to do something. And she said, oh, but Brother Wigglesworth, I'm not ready. And he turned around and he said, you live ready. Because if you have to get ready, you might miss your opportunity. So we live ready. Glory be to God. Now, Ephesians 6, if you want to take notes, write them down because you can go over these notes after the meeting and you can keep that tank full. Glory to God. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer. In the Amplified Bible, it says, pray with all manner of prayer. In the Passion Bible, listen to this. This is so good. It says, pray passionately in the Spirit as you consistently intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. Pray also that God's revelation would be released through me. This was Paul praying that. And you know, that's a prayer of a pastor. It's a prayer of a leader. It's a prayer of a, an itinerant minister. Pray for me that every time I preach the wonderful mysteries of God, that it releases, it releases revelation. Yes, pray that I may preach this wonderful news of God's kingdom with a bold freedom at every opportunity. Church, it's important. You know, sometimes I remember that we, we went, we were invited to a, a church, and I won't mention it, but we were invited. And, you know, in the church, I noticed that it was a smaller one that the man and woman of God in there was doing everything in the church. And it was concerning to me. They were preaching, they were setting up, they were trying to catch the people, they were doing the coffee and the tea at the end of it. They were doing literally everything. And it really concerned me. And they asked, we'd been going there a few weeks and, and the man asked my husband to preach and it, and it was good, you know. And then a few weeks later, he asked me to get up. 
and I got up and shared with the congregation about prayer. Uh, it's something I love to teach on, but I felt that it needed a level of prayer. And so as, we, as I began to teach on it, and I asked them, I said, I don't want a show of hands, but I'm asking you, how many of you spend some time every single day praying for your pastor? praying for God's word to move through him mightily, praying for him that as he studies the word, that he's going to the right word at the right season to bring forth the right bread for the people of God. I could tell that when I was preaching that, I could tell by the Holy Ghost that a lot of people in there were not praying for their man of God. And so the Spirit of God used that at the end of the service, I had numerous ones come up to me and say, I've just never thought to do that. And, and, and you could tell because I don't know if it's just me, but <clears throat> I can walk into a place and know if the walls are coated in prayer. I, I just can, f you can know that because I feel like if they're coated in prayer, something's moving in the spirit. I've been into places where they're barren of prayer and it feels hollow in there. But you know, these people came up and they said, we just didn't, one after one, and then a couple of them come up and they said, oh my goodness, you know, we need to repent. I said, no, you just need to start praying. Do you know, a lot of them picked up from that next day and they started that week praying every day for their pastor and their wife, praying for him. Do you know, when we went back that next Sunday, you could feel the difference. The atmosphere was different. It, it didn't look like the pastor looked like the labor, the yoke was easy. The labor was easy that day. And I began to point that out to them and show them, hey, look, you joined, you didn't preach, but you joined with that word, you joined and you helped that word come out and be ministered into people's hearts. It's so important, never take that lightly. It's important that you pray for your pastors. It's important that you pray Pray for the men and the women that God puts in those pulpits, that his word is coming forth, the right word at the right time, and that you're praying for them to keep the opposition away from them, to give them that, that help with them, for that supply of the spirit to come on them so that when they come in, that everything's set for that word to begin to flow freely, accurately, but also boldly. You know, I remember Brother Hagen sharing one time and he said, you know, he went to one place and he said he'd, um, he'd prayed, he'd fasted, he'd done everything through the week. And he says when he preached the word, it was like it was being a tennis game. It was coming back and he felt like it was hitting him. And um, he said, and he'd done everything that week. He said the next week he didn't do a lot of fasting. And he said he went into the congregation to pray in this other church. And he said there were so many things happening in the spirit in that church. And he said he asked the Lord and he said, it's if the people engage in prayer and engage with you, they help make the way. And uh, we need to do that. You know, we need to be praying. Then we become a part of the service. We're helping in that service. We're part of bringing in a supply through our prayer for God to be able to move. When someone gets born again, you can go, wow, Father, you allowed me to be praying. And wow, look, there was a salvation in the service. Look at that miracle. Look, someone got born again. And it's the team. God doesn't do anything think with one person. He builds teams. Teams are built together. He came on the earth and what did Jesus do? He built a team around him and he put into a team and the team worked together. Glory be to God. And that's what we need. We got to have prayers. I remember George Pearson saying that at um, uh, a minister's meeting in Melbourne, Australia. 
And he said it is so important that the man of God, the pastor, the, the minister in that time has got that prayer. He's got to have people praying for him. So I encourage you to be men and women that, that are not just, you know, bless my pastor and bless his family and then forget them. No, pray in the spirit, connect with the spirit, start working with the spirit to bring that supply to them. Put that supply around them. Put that supply around their families. And you know, we're, we're not just, it's not a five minute thing. We're working together as a team. What for? So that as a team, we see the plans of God, the purposes of God fulfilled every time we come together in our churches. Glory be to God. Well, that was a little rabbit trail, but that was a good one, wasn't it? It's so important that we pray because your prayer touches every area of your life. And you know, it's like picking a rock up and throwing it in the water and those ripples all go out, you know, and it ripples to shore. Well, that's how your prayers are. They begin to ripple out, praying together. And they ripple out and they start touching hearts. They start touching circumstances. They start touching situations in lives. And, and you know, as we're saying this, I, I wrote this down because I felt this was really important. Praying together is really important, but it has to be built on developing your own prayer life because you need to have your own personal prayer life that has to be built in your life you have to have that relationship in the spirit moving with the spirit in prayer in your own prayer life so praying together yeah that's great we all I love love to do that yeah, but it's very important and essential that you're developing your own prayer life and you know something let me share something else and throw that in today praying in the holy spirit in tongues is really what helps to because it helps us to become more sensitive to what the holy spirit is wanting to do and how he's wanting to work and and you become more still in a sense that you're starting to be more aware of what's wanting to come up out of that well and to be more spoken out through your life. You know, 1 Corinthians 14, 2 talks about that, praying in the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said this, pray so you don't enter into temptation. You know, there's temptation all around our lives and we have to pray to stay strong. There's a temptation on people not to pray. There's all kinds of seductions of the enemy that he tries to trip people up with. But Jesus said, pray, so even if the temptation comes, you don't enter into it. Mark 14, 38 says, listen to this, keep awake and watch and pray constantly that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we need church, we need our prayer time, we need our word time, because that's what helps keep your spirit strong and healthy. That's what helps it growing. You know, I like my devotion time. After I've prayed, I like to read something in the scriptures and I like to see the theme of what I'm reading, what God is speaking to me through that. You know, you put your hand and you say, Father, as I read this, help my eyes to see what you want me to see in it. Help my ears to hear what you're wanting to speak to me through it. So it doesn't just become, well, I've read my chapter, I can go. No, there's a feeding in there. There's something in there that God wants your eyes on. He wants your ears to be able to hear. So we begin to ask him. And you know, you get stronger and stronger and strong enough that what happens is that your spirit begins to dominate your life and not your flesh. You know, the Bible says that the the spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. But Proverbs 18, listen to this, you're going to love this scripture. 
Proverbs 18, 14 says, the strong spirit of a man will sustain him. Church, do you know what sustain means? The strong spirit of a man will carry him, will help him, will support him, will refresh him, even in bodily pain and trouble. You know, I, I, I heard a testimony, but I was kind of leaving, so I caught the tail end as, as I was moving into an appointment today. And, and that testimony, uh, I heard someone say that they knew a man that was going through so much pain and even the medication that he was getting from the doctor was not helping relieve the pain from his body. He was tormented with it. He wasn't sleeping well. But he started to pray in the spirit. And he noticed as he began to put more time into praying in the spirit, the pain began to release. The pain began to decrease. And his body began to get uh, pain-free. What was happening? He was building strength into his spirit man. And what does it say? The strong spirit of a man sustains him through bodily pain and trouble. And that started helping him. Do you know when we begin to give more time to praying in tongues, there's so many things that have been clinging to lives that you don't even realize that they're dropping off you. You know, I knew someone a long time ago they, uh, you know, every couple of words used to be a, a bad word. It wasn't a very nice word that would come out. And, you know, they got born again, very excited, very switched on to God. I mean, so excited that they were born again. They were praying in the spirit, singing in the spirit. And, you know, we noticed over a couple of months, you know, this person didn't say, you know, I'm not going to swear, I'm not going to swear, I'm not going to say bad words, I'm not going to swear. No, they didn't put their focus on it. They put their focus on praying in the Spirit, not realizing it, and that fell off their life. Till two or three months later, we just said to them, do you realize that you're not saying this and this and this? And, I, and they said, and we asked them, did you purpose to do it? No, no. And it just fell off them. And that's why it's so important. You're building up strength in your spirit and it starts to, to, to refresh you. Uh, it starts to help push those things off your life. Glory to God. I hope this is helping you tonight because this has been such a blessing to me as I've been studying it out and listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord. I love it when my husband preaches from Ephesians 6. You know, my husband in every Bible he has ever owned, the book that always falls to pieces in his Bible is the book of Ephesians. Really, the rest of the Bible, I mean, he reads the rest of the Bible. I'm not saying he doesn't, but he does so much study in Ephesians that always that's the loose pages or the ones that he goes, look, look at this. And so he, and when he preaches on it, you know what? It's like everything comes to attention in me. But it says, be strong in the Lord. And in the Passion Bible, please listen to this tonight. He says, now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for the last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in you and through you. Glory be to God. Power, power, wonder-working power, working in you, flowing through you. Glory be to God. You know, I have a question. How do we get strong in the Lord? He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We get strong really two ways. We get strong in his word. That's the primary way. We know that the word is alive and active and energizing and effective and sharper than a two-edged sword. Glory be to God. You know, when I speak a scripture out, I go, Father, 
Be that unto me according to that word. I thank you that that word now is alive and active, energizing and effective and sharp on the inside of me, cutting away from my life things that need to be cut away in the name of Jesus. And the second way is our prayer life. Your prayer life is very important. It helps that sensitivity. Glory be to God. Prayer helps our spirit man to become developed. Now, I want you to go to Jude, the book of Jude. And we're going to look at verse 20. And I'm going to read it in the minute to you from the Amplified Bible. And it says, But you, beloved, building up, do you know, as I read that, I saw building up, building up. Oh my goodness, building up. How many times have I read that? Building up. And I said, oh my goodness, Father, I know why you put that in the Bible. Because the world's always pulling down. The circumstances of life are always pulling us down. Situations come into our life. What are they designed for? To pull you down all the time. Those things this way, that way, front, back of you. What are they coming for? To pull you down. But he says, beloved, building yourself up. Church, do you know, I know it's good to get counseled. I'm not, I'm not saying don't do that. And it's good sometimes to have a person that you can share with. But you know when you're going through things, the first thing that you should do, he said, is build yourself up. Father, how do we do that? On your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, see in konamasita, brega ni in kusima, ano in kone impo, ma ansone inko. And when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, I'm going to throw something in today. You don't pray in tongues and let your head go to dinner. You don't pray in tongues and let your head go on. What are the kids doing? What's happening here? No. When you begin to pray in tongues, you connect everything and you listen to those words that are coming up and you give them a voice. You give them a sound and you work with those words that the Holy Ghost is bringing up out of your belly. Unsone enko ma antone enko and you're listening and you're listening and you're working with that but you're building yourself up in your most holy faith listen to what it says in the amplified it says but you beloved build yourself up founded on your most holy faith here listen to this please listen he says make progress so progress can be made through this. He says, make progress. What does that mean? It means advance, develop, go higher and move forward. Oh, there's a good start for wanting to pray in the spirit. Make progress and rise. What does that mean? Ascend, increase. What does Isaiah 60 say? Arise, get yourself to a higher place. Glory be to God. Why do we need to get ourselves to a higher place? Because the view's much better from that higher place. How many of you know that? When you go up a few levels and you're looking out, the view is much more uncluttered. Get yourself to a higher place. Oh, you know, I remember one day when we were first in ministry and you know, you believe in God for oxygen. You believe in God for everything and you count everything. And, I, and we were in there and finances coming in when it wasn't one and one make two. And, and I tell you, one and one didn't make anything. And we were believing for everything. We were believing for the hall that we were hiring, the home that we were living in. We were believing to feed the kids, get them clothes. We were believing to put petrol in, in, in our car and, 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 and you'd get, and, and it, it didn't look like anything was gonna help us when we'd look at the finances coming in. And I remember one day it was, it felt really, like, like I just said, 
it was pulling. It was wanting to anchor us, pull us down, pull us down. And I remember I closed all the blinds. I took the phone off the hook. We didn't have mobiles then. Took the phone off the hook at home, locked the door, and I began to pray. I picked up the book of Psalms and I started reading them and praying in the Spirit. And I'll tell you, I got lost in the Spirit and I could relate with the Apostle Paul. I didn't even know if I was where I was. I'll tell you, and I prayed and I began to pray. I didn't even pray about our finances, but I knew that I had to get something off me. Do you know when I came out of that prayer, something had broken. And we had this lovely man that was part of our church. And we're sitting down because it was nearly Christmas. We didn't know how we were going to buy the kids Christmas presents. We didn't know what we could do that year. And the next thing at our front door, we got. I opened the door with my husband. This man says to us, I don't want to come in. He pulls out of his pocket the biggest, biggest wad of, of, of notes that I had seen. And he looked at both of us he put, and he made us put our hands out. He put them into our hands. He said, they're not for the church, they're for you. You go and do what you need to do over Christmas and you go and have a few days away. And with that, he left. And I'll tell you, I knew that God, in that prayer, something had broken through. Amen. God's such a blessing to us. And it's so important that we're praying every day and giving ourselves to the Holy Spirit and letting him work through us. And, you know, in some ways tonight, I've kind of done all this to get here. You know, because I, I, I kept thinking all day, Father, I've done my notes. I feel like I've done what you wanted me to do, but I don't feel they're finished. And I don't know what to do. And so I, Holy Spirit, I really need your help because I don't know where to go. I don't know how to close this. I don't know where you're taking this. I just know that this was your leading, but from there, I don't know. And so all of a sudden, this rose up in me. And I want you to check, turn to James chapter 5 in verse 16. And now we're going to read from the second part of verse 16. He says, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Church, I started hearing today this. Come to me. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man. It's life-giving. It's life motivating. The, ex, the fervent prayer of a righteous man makes power available. Life giving power, life motivating power, life changing power, life influencing power. It can even change nations. Glory be to God. But it's got to be the earnest, heartfelt prayer of a man who knows his rights. He's making power available. And, you know, it says it in the Passion Bible. Let me read it, and then we're going to pray a little bit. It says, then pray for one another to be healed for tremendous power. Sorry, let me say that again. Then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Verse 17, Elijah was a man with human frailties, just like all of us. He was no different than us. But he prayed and received supernatural answers. Glory be to God. And if he was just like us and prayed earnestly, then when we pray earnestly, we can receive supernatural answers. Glory be to God. He actually 
shut the heavens over the land so that there would be no rain for three and a half years. Verse 18, then he prayed again and the skies opened up over the land. So, and I want you to underline this because when I read it, I seen it. It says, so rain came again and produced a harvest. What is God after? He's after the harvest. What does he need? The prayers to pray for the rain, for the harvest, to come into the barns, to come into the church barns, to come in. Now, glory be to God. Hosea, you, and let me just throw this in. What will the rain bring? And put that in your Bible. The rain will produce the harvest. We have to pray for the rain. Zechariah 10, one says, ask for the rain. Another one says, pray for the rain. Another one says, call for the rain. Pray for the rain to come over the nations, to come over the schools. You know, my little young granddaughter, she's nine, and um, she's such a joy in our life. And I pray over her school every day. I pray over the teachers. I pray over the students. I pray over the administrators and the volunteers. I pray over that school. We want rain in that school. We want rain to touch the teachers' hearts. Glory to God. We want to see a harvest of children coming, swept into the kingdom of God for such a time as this. Hallelujah. I pray over and, uh, the other two of our, 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 our great grandkids and I pray over them in the, in the kinders they go to. And I pray for the reins of the Spirit spirit to come over those kindergartens in Jesus name. Hosea 6 3 says then we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and former rain into the earth. What is the rain? It's the power of God and every major move of God has always seen power. It was the power of God that brought the children of Israel out with all the silver, with all the gold, and there was not one feeble amongst them. Listen, that's an absolute miracle. They were slaves and there's not one feeble amongst them. That was the power of God. Glory be to God. On the day of Pentecost, what happened? The power of the Spirit came. And what happened? There was miracles. There was multitudes of people being swept into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And where did it start? With a group of people praying in the upper room. And you might say, well, there was, there's only me in there. There was only 120 in there. And the Bible says they turned the world upside down. You could turn your family upside down as you give yourself to praying and not being moved how they look, how they talk, how they dressed. You get into that place and you begin to pray for them and their lives will get turned upside down, inside out for the glory of God. But Elijah prayed and I'll tell you, when he prayed, physical rain came down because they'd seen no rain. So there's no vegetation coming up. And when that rain started to come down, the harvest started to come up. Church, when our prayers start coming down, when the rain and the power of God starts coming down on schools, on communities, on nations, what's going to happen is the harvest of new births, the harvest of miracles is going to start coming forth for the glory of God. And tonight, that's what we're going to pray about. We're going to pray about about the rain. We want the rain. Glory. We want the rain on our churches. That it's not church as normal. That our churches are going to become miracle places. Houses where people experience the miracle working power of God. What's going to get the notice of people in our communities? 
What's going to pull them out of the bars? What's going to pull them out of these nightclubs is going to be when they know that church down the road, when they pray for you, something happens, something changes. Glory to God. And we need to start praying for that rain to come on our churches, to come on this nation and on nations. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father in heaven, if you can use anyone in prayer, you can use me for your glory. Hallelujah. Use me for your glory. Holy Spirit, I yield my will to your will. And I know the will of the Father is that he wants that rain coming down on barren places. Oh, Father, coming down on places where, where people are lost, their hairs, they're wounded, they're rejected. And we pray, we pray for the rain. Oh, glory, you said, ask for the rain. And Lord, you gave us a, an illustration in James 5 of what happened when Elijah prayed for that rain, that the rain began to fall. There was father and a harvest was brought forth. And we pray for the harvests of souls, of men and women, of children, of youth. Oh, Father, we pray for the lost to be saved in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we're praying for that. We're praying for souls, souls, Father. Oh, so ma anto mi in si si ima bruko no na na ma soto en koni ni ni mi siya bruno ampa si kena manuko bruno na 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 ma soto. We're praying for the souls. We're praying for men and women and children and youth to come out of darkness, to come out of those dark places. Oh, si in kone mi manoke kishonoma bronona ankosima menike kishonoma antone in kosima brege kishonoma oh, so ne imposia brukoni impotiti ima oh, loke kishonoma that our churches are being filled with the lost being saved the sick being healed, the dead being raised in Jesus' name. On sona nanama, brege gishanoma, on tone in kosima, brege gishanoma, stir up the body of Christ, Father, and send out the laborers into the harvest fields. Oh, sona nanama, me inko, ma anso, me inke kishanoma, me into tati. Inga Bruno Imposia Menike Kishanoma Olo Kishanoma and Sonene Nemi Sikena Manoka Brukoni Impo Anonene Kishanoma Olo Enkone Ima O Sono no Noma Enkone Inko Kishanoma O Sono You know the Lord said this to me and I shared it with Patsy Kemenesi a little while ago. You know, um, a lot of my aunties and uncles now, you know, that we see them get saved, they're now in heaven. And the Lord one day woke me up to start praying. I have cousins in England and cousins in Australia. And I remember getting up and I saw the different faces of cousins. Lord, what, what is it? What? And he said to me, you are kind of like the monarch now in the family. You're the oldest of all the cousins and you're born again. And I want you now as an assignment to be praying for every one of their lives and calling out their names before me. And you know I do that and call out their names and my cousins. My goodness, I want to see my family in heaven. I want to see my cousins, my second cousins. I want to see them in heaven with their parents who have now gone to heaven. Glory be to God. Oh, you know what? If it doesn't sting when you hear that someone has passed away, even on the news, when I hear the news and someone got killed, my first thought is, oh God, were they saved? 
We've got to start pressing for souls. We're, we're the end time churches and we've got to start seeing these churches get filled with people being born again. If you bring them in, We'll see they get saved. We'll pray in for them. Bring in the people. Bring them in. Pray for them. Glory be to God. So that they can have the word of God ministered to their lives. That they can begin to experience for themselves the power of God. This is not a story. This is life to those that find it, and health to all their flesh. Glory be to God. When they take their last breath, did they take it in Christ? Oh, my God, or did they take it without him? We've got to see people getting saved. Oh, son and emisia, brege kishon o manu kesima, anton and emasika, brege kishon o ma, anton and eke kishon o ma, mito, mesiken a manuke, brukona amposiken a manuke. Father, souls coming out, Lord, even from the communities round our churches oh revival round our churches in the communities in Jesus name oh sona nana masoto in kone imposia brege kishono manoke kishono ma antone inko sisi inkena manoke brukone imposia antone imposia anlo inko nana nana in Kosikinama, where those churches are planted. Father, we call for a harvest, a harvest of souls, a harvest of souls coming in, coming in out of darkness. Oh, healed, saved, healed and saved. Glory be to God. Oh, Sena Nanama, Brununi Inko, Ma Anto, Me Insone Inko Kishonoma, Bruko. Ne imposia, manana na masoto, enkoni imposia, me enkoni into no 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 ma, olele, olele le ke kishono ma, onto ne 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 na masoto, enkoni impo, enkoni impo, enkoni impo, enkoni impo, enkoni impo, this way and that way, this way and that way, this way and that way, reaching out, reaching out, oh no ne 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 me. Sika, Bruko, Ma Anso, Me Enko Kishono Ma, Bruno Imposia, Anno Ne Enko Sima. Our families, the families, Father, the families, the children coming in, the children coming in. On sona na na ma, bro, me ento, me enko si kina ma, Bruno impo, ma ento ke kishono ma. Suffer not the little ones to come unto you, for such is the kingdom of God. Oh le enko na 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 ma. Bruko si inko me into tama si kenama. Bruko ne imposia me ni ke kishonoma. Ah, inko, inko, inko kiki. Onko ne impo, inso, inso ne 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 mi si ayama. Oh, yes you do, yes you do. Oh, ne 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 mi si ay. Bruko na 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 ma. Oh, kama si ka, kama kiki a si an. Come out now, come out now, come out now, come out now. In the name of Jesus. Give them up now, give them up now, give them up now. Oh, sona inko, me into, me into tati inko sima, broko ne impo, antone inko sima, brono inko. Inko ne impo tati ima anso me inko me inko me inko kakishono ma ole inko sima. I said release them. I said release them. 
Yodne and Cosima, Broco Cacishanoma, and Son and Messia. Oh, look, Aki, I say to the East, you release them. Yes, now. I say to the West, yes. you give them up Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. On son ne enko bro no ne 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 me bro ko keshima me enso ne enko sima bro ko koshono ma brege kishe shene impo masoto katima katima. Ketima na masoto inkoni impo ma anso me inkoni impo tatima brukoni impo intone na na ma anke na masoto inkoni impo impo teti ima antone inko sima anto inko sima sika na ma oh father we're seeking we're seeking we know the heart of the God we know your heart your heart is for people. That's why you sent Jesus. You died, Jesus, not for buildings. You died for people. You gave your life for people. You shed your blood for people. Oh, Cosima, Brukoninimisia, Anonanana. Now you give them up, I said. Now, in the name of Jesus. Release them now. In the name of Jesus. In only in Cosima, Brege Gishanoma, Me Antone in Cosima, Brege Gishanoma, in Coninemia. Release them. Yes. Now. Pull them out of that clay. Pull them out of that dark place. Come out now. Come out now. Untona na na masoto, inkoni impo, me enso, ma anto, me inko, me sita, me sita, me sikini inkoti ima. Oh, you let them go, I said, let them go. Intoni inko sima. Ale inkone na 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 masoto, inso. Now, 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 now. Nika Kishanoma Nika Kika Shoto Matanto in Cosima Ampo Toti in CC in Cosima Antony in Cosima Elo Lele Lele Missi Ayama Oh Lele Lele Kishanoma in kuni in potati ima, alu kuni in posi ayama. Oh, li, li in kosi si ima. Father, 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 ulu kini nemia. Glory, glory, glory. Father, you said the seed of the righteous is delivered. The seed of the righteous, the seed of the righteous, the seed of the righteous, the seed of the righteous. We call them home. We call them to arise, arise, arise and shine for the glory of God. The glory of God is coming on you. Oh, lele in Cosima, Sanamanica, Brege Gishanoma. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. And with the ink, oh, I look at Kekisha Shanoma. I know that. You know, there's someone out there right now, and you've been suffering with pain, and it's been going right up one arm and right to the back of your neck. And the Lord's been pressing on that in me while I've been praying. I want you right now just to hold up your hand. And Father, we declare healing. We declare that by his stripes, they are healed. That those stripes are still active right now. And in the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus, we declare healing. 
in Jesus' name. Yes. Glory to yes. God. Yes. Oh, and someone yes. with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Wow, eyes. Your eyes. You've been having problems with your eyes. Your eyes. We call healing into your eyes. Right to the back of your eyes. We call healing right behind the eyeball. We call healing in. And healing to flow right through in the name yes. of Jesus. Jesus breaks every fetter. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. You are healed. Yes. Yes. Nenemi sone nenemi sika manu nenemi si koko shono manuka. Oh, we thank you, thank Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your healing power. Elu koko shono manuka. Prege kisho shono manuka kisho no ma mi inso mi inso. You do not have any rights to cross over our doors. You don't have rights in our house, devil. You have no right in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we call healing, healing. Healing, healing. We call healing over a marriage. And I believe it's it's not just one. There's a couple of marriages. And it's been a bit wild. So we're speaking peace into those marriages. Antone in Cosima. In Cosikina Manuku, Bregegishanoma, on son and enemy seeking a Manuku, Bregegishan, let go of finding faults in one another. Let go of judging one another and start praying for each other. Start declaring the love of God for one another. Start declaring that the love of God in you endures long with each other. It's patient, it's kind. And begin to speak that word. Stop speaking accusations over one another and speak words that bring peace. Put words that lift. Not words that put down, but words that will lift your marriage up. Words that will lift each other up, saith the Lord. Lift, lift, lift. Build up your marriage with words that will edify. Words of love, words of peace. Oh, see in tornene messiah. Hallelujah. And I say of the Lord, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. No, not never. For there's someone out there, you've given so much to God, but there's a little bit you've held back because can I really trust him? So many people in my life have let me down. He will never leave you. You've had people that have left you, that promised to be around you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. No, not ever. 
So you put your life in his hands and you give everything to him because he gives everything to you. His eyes are always on you and his ears are always open to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for this time tonight. Wow, Father. There's a deep well there. We could pull up so much more tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the marriages. Bless the marriages. Bless marriages. We call our marriages blessed. We call our marriages prosperous. We call our marriages strong and healthy in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Father, we say tonight, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. We give you glory for it. Thank you for this night. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us, for us to be able to move with you in prayer. We honor you, Father, and thank you for the people that have joined us tonight. In Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday at 10 a.m. and then again next week for the Eagles prayer meeting. Bless you all.